Itihasa, meaning history in Sanskrit, consists of the Mahabharata and the Ramayana sometimes the Puranas too, are included. The Mahabharata includes the story of the Kurukshetra War and also preserves the traditions of the lunar dynasty in the form of embedded tales. The Puranas narrate the universal history as perceived by the Hindus, cosmogony, myth, legend and history. The Ramayana contains the story of Rama and incidentally relates the legends of the solar dynasty. The classical Indian poets usually derive the story of their poetry and drama from the Itihasas. In our time, these traditions have been most carefully reconstructed from the available texts and arranged in chronological order by F. E. Parjitar in his compendium Ancient Indian Historical Tradition. <laughs> Brahmanical tradition Topic: Cosmogony and the Antediluvian History. According to the Vedic traditions, human history proceeds in cycles, dependent on the evolutions and dissolutions of the world. Time is divided into four ages: Sada Yuga, Treta Yuga, Devapara Yuga, and Kali Yuga, collectively forming one Maha Yuga. Seventy-one Maha Yugas form a Manvantara, a period of time over which a Manu presides. In each cycle, this Manu is the first man and also the first king and lawgiver. Every Manvantara has its own set of Indra, gods and seven sages. Fourteen Manvantara create a Kalpa eon, after which the creation comes to a close in a periodical destruction called Pralaya. After that, the creation starts all over again in an endless cycle of evolutions and dissolutions. The traditions relate that the present Kalpa is called Varaha. Out of the fourteen Manvantaras of this Kalpa, six have passed. The current Manvantara is called Vivasvada after the Manu who presides over it. It is to Vivasvada Manu that the royal genealogies of the Itahasa trace their origin. It was in the Kaksusa Manvantara, which immediately preceded the present Manvantara, that King Prithu, the great grandson of Kaksusa Manu, leveled the earth, built cities and villages, and developed agriculture, trade, pasture, and cattle breeding. This cycle ended after only eight more generations with the Great Flood. The Sada Yuga The Great Flood at the end of Kaksusa Manvantara wipes away all life forms. Only Vivasvata Manu is saved by Lord Vishnu, in the avatar of the fish, Matsya to repopulate the earth in the next cycle. All royal lines in our cycle are traced in the Itahasa from Manu Vivasvata's sons and his only daughter Isla. This daughter, produced by means of a ritual, later becomes his wife. Iksvaku, the eldest son of Manu, establishes the solar line from Vivasvan, the sun god, the father of Vivasvata Manu at Ayodhya in Kosala. Iksvaku's younger son Nimi migrates a little further east and founds the house of Videha. Its capital Mithila is established by his son Mithi, also called Janaka which later becomes the generic name the kings of Videha. The lunar line is established at about the same time at Pratisthana in Madhyadisa the Dope by Pururavas, the son of Ila and Buddha, the illegitimate child of Soma, the moon god. The tale of his love for the Nymphurvasi is one of the few tales that has caught the Indian imagination for generations. First told in the Rigveda, it has been treated dramatically by Kalidasa in his Vikramorvasiam. Pururava's younger son, Amavasu founds the kingdom of Kanyakaba modern Kanauj. the dynasty again splits into two after the reign of Ayas, the eldest son of Pururavas. Nahusa, the eldest son of Ayas, obtains the position of Indra in the heaven but is banished from there when he lusts after Saki, the wife of Indra. Kisatravarta, another son of Ayu, establishes the dynasty of Kashi Varanasi. His descendants were called Kasiyas. Nahusa's son and successor Yayati was a renowned conqueror and was reckoned as a Kakravartan. He had five sons Yadu and Tervasu from Devayani, the daughter of Sukra, the preceptor of Asuras and Druhyu, Anu and Puru from Sarmistha, the daughter of Asura king Vrsa Parva. Yayati installs Puru, the youngest but the most dutiful son as his successor in the ancestral sovereignty in Pratisthana. The elder sons obtain the outlying areas. 
From the sons of Yayati descend the five famous royal lines of the Yadavas, the Turvasis, the Druhyas, the Anavas, and the Pauravas. Immediately after Yadu, the Yadava dynasty is bifurcated, the main line continued by Krasti, and the independent line of Haihai is led by Sahasrajit. The Yadava branch first develops a great principality under King Sasabindu, who becomes a Kakravartin. King Mandhata, the son of Uvansva, the king of Ayodhya, marries his daughter Bindamati and rises to eminence. He follows in the footsteps of his father-in-law, extends his sway very widely and becomes a Kakravartin himself. His son Purukutsa marries Narmada, the river goddess. Another son, also a famous king, called Muchakunda builds and fortifies a town on the bank of that river, it was Mahismati. Soon thereafter, the Druhyu king Gandhara retires to the northwest modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and establishes the kingdom of Gandhara there. His descendants scatter into the regions beyond India and establish many Malecha principalities. Later, the Anavas divide into two branches under Usinara and Titiksu. The sons of Usinara establish separate tribes of the Yadhayas, Ambasthas, Navarastras, Kramilas and Sivis in eastern Punjab. Sivi, the son of Usinara and the originator of the Sivis in Sivapura, is celebrated in the Indian mythology for his generosity. His son set up the kingdoms of Rasadarbas, Madrakas, Kaikayas and Saviras, and occupied the whole Punjab. The other branch of the Anavas under Titiksu moved east and founded the principalities of Anga, Banga, Kalinga, Suma and Pundra. The Haihaya king Kurtavirya had the Bhargavas as his priests and enriched them. His kinsmen tried to recover the wealth but the Bhargavas resisted. The Haihayas then maltreated them due to which they fled to different countries. Gaudi was then king of Kanyakaba and had a daughter Satyavati. The Bhargava Rsi Rsika marries her and begets a son Jamadagni. About the same time Gaudi has a son Visvamitra, in the solar line, Trayaruna, a near contemporary of Gaudi and Kurtavirya, ruled the kingdom of Ayodhya at this time. On the counsel of his priest Vasistha, he exiles his son Satavrata, also called Trisanku. After Trayaruna, Vasistha refuses to perform Trisanku's consecration. A little later, Visvamitra of Kanyakaba tries to obtain the wishing cow Nandini of Vasistha. A fierce combat follows between the two, in which Visvamitra is defeated. Convinced of the superiority of Brahmins, he resolves to become a Brahmarsi and relinquishes his throne. When engaged in austerities, Visvamitra is befriended by Trisanku. He then champions Trisanku's cause, performs his royal consecration, and on his death elevates him in his living body to heaven. The rivalry of Visvamitra and Vasistha continues even during the reign of Hariskandra, Trisanku's son. Hariskandra had a son Rohita, whom he had vowed to sacrifice to Varuna. He postponed the sacrifice for many years due to which he is afflicted with dropsy. Rohita, on Vasistha's advice, to propitiate Varuna, buys a Jigarda's son Sunasepa who is Visvamitra's grandnephew as sacrificial victim in his stead. When about to be killed, Sunasepa chants the Varuna mantra, taught to him by Visvamitra. Varuna appears, grants the boy his freedom and the king a cure from the disease. Visvamitra then adopts the boy as his chief son with the name Devarada. A number of Visvamitra's sons, who protest against the status given to Devarada, are cursed by their angry father to become outcasts. They become the ancestors of Dasi tribes, such as the Andras, Mudibas, Palindas, etc. Visvamitra, subsequently, obtains the position of a Brahmarsi. In the Haihaya line, Kurtavirya was succeeded by his son Arjuna Kartavirya, who was a mighty king. After a long reign he has dissension with Jamadagni. As a result, Parasurama, the son of Jamadagni by Ranuka, the daughter of a minor Iksvaku king, kills Kartavirya Arjuna, whereupon Kartavirya's sons kill Jamadagni. In revenge, Parasurama resolves to slaughter the entire class of warriors Kshatriyas, and so far succeeds that only five survive to continue the great dynasties. After Kartavirya, the High High is divided into five collateral tribes, the Talajangas, the Vitahotras, the Avantiyas, Tudakiras and Jatas. They attack Ayodhya and drive King Bahu from the throne. They also attack, defeat and drive the Kasi king Devodasa from Varanasi. Pratardana, the son of Devodasa subdues the Vitahotras and recovers the throne. A little later, Bahu begets a son Sagara, and Sagara defeats all those enemies, regains his kingdom and destroys the high high power for good. Sagara had 60,000 sons who insult Kapila Rsi and are, in turn, reduced to ashes by him. Therefore, Sagara is succeeded by his grandson Amsaman on the throne of Ayodhya. With the reign of Sagara, the Krta Yuga comes to an end.
The Treta Yuga Bhagiratha, the great grandson of Sagara, brings down the divine river Ganges to earth to expiate the sins of the sons of Sagara. Ardhaparna is the next prominent king in the dynasty made famous by his association with Nala, the king of Nisadas. Nala married Damayanti, the daughter of Bhima, the Yadava king of Vidarbha. The delightful story of their marriage and the unhappy sequel of his subsequent temporary loss of his kingdom and destitution through gambling, is in the Mahabharata told to Yudhishthira suffering in similar circumstances. After a long eclipse corresponding to the ascendancy of the solar dynasty under Mandhata, the Paurava line is revived by Dushanta, a near contemporary of Bhagiratha. He marries Sakantala, the daughter of Visvamitra, and begets Bharata. Bharata is crowned as a Kakravartan and later gives his name to the dynasty, to the great fratricidal war between the Kauravas and Pandavas, and to India itself .e. His fifth successor Hastin shifts the capital to a place in the upper Dobe and calls it Hastinapura, after himself. Soon after Hastin, the Bharata dynasty is divided into four separate lines, the most well-known being the main Paurava line and the Pankala line. The Pankala king Devodasa is celebrated in the Rigveda as the destroyer of 99 forts of the Dasi Sambara. His sister was Ahalya, the wife of Gautama. She was deceived by Indra and expelled into the forest by her husband on account of her infidelity. The solar line once again ascends under the benevolent kingship of Ragu, Asia, and Dasharatha. The story of Rama, Dasharatha's son, forms the subject of the poem Ramayana by Valmiki. The intrigues of his stepmother Kaiki result in the exile of Rama, his wife Sita and his brother Laxmana to the forest. In the forest, Sita is abducted by Ravana, the king of Raksasas and imprisoned in Lanka, his capital. Rama forms an alliance with the monkeys and the bears of the forest and lays a siege of Lanka. Ravana is ultimately defeated and slain by Rama. He then returns to Ayodhya with his wife Sita and ascends the throne. With Rama's disappearance, the Treta Yuga comes to a close and the Devapara commences. After Rama the solar dynasty goes into permanent decline. The Devapara Yuga The Yadava line is once again split into two separate lines after the reign of Bhima, the son of Satvat by his sons Indaka and Vrsni, who style their dynasties after their respective names. Ugrasena, the father of Kamsa was an Indaka while Vasudeva, the father of Krishna was a Vrsni. The Pankala Bharata dynasty under its king Sernjaya now rises to prominence. His son Sayavana Pijavana was a great warrior and the latter's son, Sudas, annexed several kingdoms. A confederacy of the kings of the Pauravas, the Yadavas, the Sivis, the Druhyas, the Matsyas, the Tervasis and others, is formed against Sudas, who defeats them in a great battle near the river Purusni. This is called the Battle of the Ten Kings. The bulk of Rigvedic hymns Book e -X represents only five to six generations of kings and of contemporary poets of this dynasty. The Paurava line continues through Ajamita, the son of Hasti. In his line, King Samvarana was defeated and exiled to the forests on the bank of River Sindhu by the Pankalas. Parjitar identifies this Pankala king as Sudas but the exact relationship between the dynasties, chronological and political, is not recorded. Later, Samvarana reobtains his capital from the Pankalas and marries Tapati, a daughter of the sun. The playwright Kalasakara c. 900 AD has immortalized their story in his play Tapati Samvarana. Their son was Kuru and his descendants were called Kauravas. The line continues through Kuru's second son Janu. Vasu, a descendant of Kuru conquers the Yadava kingdom of Sadi, and establishes himself there. His eldest son, Burhadratha founds Jorivraja in Magadha as his capital. His son Jarasandha extends his power up to Mathura ruled by Indaka king, Kamsa, who acknowledged him as overlord in the north and Vidarbha in the south. Kamsa was a tyrant. He had imprisoned his father and usurped the throne. His nephew Krishna kills him and restores the old king to his throne. This rouses Jarasandha's wrath and he attacks Mathura. Krishna along with the Indakas and Vrsnis migrate to the west coast and build a new capital Dvaravati in Sauastra. Krishna then abducts Rukmini, the princess of Vidarbha, defeating her brother and marries her. In later life, Krsna becomes the friend of the Pandavas see below. The next famous king in the Kaurava line is Pratipa. His son, Santanu supersedes his elder brother Devapi to the throne, whereupon no rain falls for twelve years. 
Devapi then acts as a hotr chief priest and performs sacrifice for his brother and obtains rain. Santanu's grandsons were Dhr Tarastra and Pandu. The former being blind, the latter ascends the throne. Dhr Tarastra has many sons of whom Duryodhana is the eldest, and Pandu has five sons, Yudhishthira, Bhima, Arjuna, Nikula and Sahadeva. The sons of Dhr Tarastra belonging to the elder branch were called Kauravas and Pandu's sons, the Pandavas. The question of succession to the throne results in a feud between the two families culminating in the appalling slaughter in the Bharata War. All the old Kshatriya dynasties of India, it is said, took part in the great battle, fighting on one side or the other. In the battle, which lasts for 18 days, the ruses of Krishna enable the hard-pressed Pandavas to win. The Mahabharata narrates the story of this feud in detail. Subsequently, the Yadavas are themselves engulfed in civil war, and Krishna withdraws to the life of an ascetic in the forest. Here he is accidentally shot and killed by a hunter. His grandson is re-established at Indraprastha by the Pandavas. Soon the Pandavas themselves crown Pariksita, the grandson of Arjuna on the throne of Hastinapura and retire to the forest. The Devapara Yuga closes with the death of Krishna. The Kali Yuga Pariksita, on a hunting expedition, disrespects Rsi Samika and is in turn, cursed by his son Srngin to die from snake Taksaka's poison within seven days. Taksaka buys off Kasyapa, the only person who has an antidote to the poison. At the end of seven days, Parikshit dies from Taksaka's bite. His son Janamejaya, who was a minor then, later hears his father's death from his ministers, and resolves on revenge. He organizes a rite to destroy all snakes. The snakes enter the sacrificial fire by the power of the rite. Astaka, a half-snake from his mother's side who was begotten to save them, enters the rite and wins a boon of his choice by singing the praises of Janamejaya. He demands the proceedings be halted. Janamejaya cannot refuse and concludes the rite. It is during this rite that Vaisampayana, a disciple of Vyasa narrates the Mahabharata to Janamejaya. Nikaksu, sixth in line from Pariksita, transfers his capital from Hastinapura to Kasambi in Vasta as the former city is ravaged by a flood of the Ganges. The line continues for many generations till Udayana, the famous king of Vatsa and a contemporary of Buddha who carries off Vasavadatta, the princess of Avanti. Their tale is celebrated first by Ganadya in his novel Burhatkatha and later by Basa and Shudraka in their dramas Svapnavasavadatta and Vinavasavadatta, respectively. In Magadha, the descendants of Burhadratha and Jarasandha retain the throne till they are replaced by the Sisanaga dynasty, which among others include the famous kings Bimbisara and Ajatashatru. Mahapama Nanda usurps the throne from the last king of the Sisanaga line. He overthrows all old Kshatriya dynasties, the Iksvakas, the Pankalas, the Kasiyas, the Haihayas, the Kalingas, the Asmakas, the Kurus, the Maitalas, the Surasinas and the Vitahotras, and subdues the whole central India. The Puranas, hence, call him the destroyer of all Kshatriyas and monarch of the whole earth which was under his sole sway. According to the Mahabharata, the Kali Yuga will close with the coming of Kalki, at which point the Krita Yuga will recommence. Topic. Conclusion This lengthy history of kings and sages is rounded off by the bards with a hint of cynicism regarding the ephemeral nature of fame. Topic. Jaina tradition The Jainas have their own version of traditional history, brought into line with their legends of the 24 Jinas who from time to time have refounded their religion on earth. Rama, whom the Jainas call Padma, appears as a divine hero and a Baladeva, in a variant version of his life, whilst Krsna is similarly a Vasudeva and his brother Balarama, a Baladeva. There are nine each of these Baladeva and Vasudeva heroes, and their nine enemies, Prativasudevas, including Ravana and Jarasandha. With the Jinas and the twelve universal emperors Kakravartans this makes up the 63 great men of their tradition. The emperors include Bharata and Sagara, and Brahmadeva or Brahmadatta who is familiar also to the Buddhists, but the others are not familiar elsewhere. Three of them, including Santi, became Jinas also. The Jaina traditions seem to draw in part on ancient sources independent of those of the Brahmanas, as do the Buddhists also, and are not merely corruptions of Brahmanical traditions. 
It is noticeable that their legends are much more schematic and regular than the others. Topic: 63 Salaka Puruses. Topic: Buddhist tradition. The Buddhists preserve another different version of the traditional history. According to them, in the beginning of the cosmic cycle mankind lived on an immaterial plane where there was no need of food and clothing and no private property, family, government or laws. Then gradually the process of cosmic decay sets in and mankind becomes earthbound and feel the need of food and shelter. As men lose their primeval glory distinctions of class varna arise and they enter into agreements with one another, accepting the institutions of private property and the family. With this theft, murder, adultery and other crime begin. So, the people meet together and decide to appoint one man among them to maintain order in return for a share of the produce of their fields and herds. This, then, was the first king called Mahasamada the Great Chosen One. He receives the title of Raja because he pleased the people. The first Kakravartan, Mandhata is sixth in descent from Mahasamada. Mandhata is followed by a long succession of kings, the most famous among them include Sudarsana, Sagara, Bharata and Rama Dasarathi the last three known to the Brahmanical and Jain traditions. In this line was born a king called Karnaka who had two sons Gautama and Bharadvaja. Bharadvaja ascends the throne after his father's death, but dies without any issue. On the other hand, two children are born from eggs, which were formed from coagulated blood and semen of Gautama and hatched by the son. From one of the eggs comes the famous Iksvaku Pali Akaka, who succeeds Bharadvaja and founds the Solar Dynasty. The four sons and four daughters of Iksvaku are exiled to the foothills of the Himalayas due to the machinations of their stepmother. They intermarry amongst themselves to maintain the purity of their blood and later establish the towns of Kapilavasta and Koli. Their descendants were called Sakyas. The famous prince Visvantara Pali Vesantara was a near descendant of Akaka. Later, the Buddha is born in this dynasty. Itihasa as a source of actual history Historian Romila Thapar discusses the problem of associating major lineages of the early tradition with archaeological evidence e.g. with painted grey ware or chalcolithic black and red ware, understanding the Puranic genealogies as records of a general pattern of settlements and migrations, rather than factual information on history and chronology. She tries, however, to associate the chronology of the obviously more significant lineages, that of the Puru and the Yadavas with different archaeological layers. Like Parjitar, she divides the Puru lineage into three distinct phases, connecting phase 1 from Manu to Bharata with the ochre-colored pottery, phase 2 after a break, from Bharata's adopted sons to Kuru with the painted grey ware, phase 3 starting from Kuru being terminated by the Mahabharata war. The Yadava line is associated with the black and red ware, the geographical distribution of which is traced in connection with the different branches and migrations of the Yadava tribe, according to the Puranic sources. She concludes, however more cautiously the attempt to link the Peru and Yadava lineages with certain archaeological cultures has resulted in some echoes of identification, but nothing more definite than that can be said at this point. The identification remains speculative by considering the problem of chronology archaeological evidence versus traditional chronology and the question of identifying the Indo-Aryan speakers, phase 1 up to Bharata being understood as a pre-Indo-Aryan lineage, which was taken over later into the tradition of the Aryan-speaking people. Topic influence on the classical Indian poetry The rules of classical Indian poetics prescribe that the themes of the Mahakavyas ornate epics and Natakas drama should be primarily selected from the Itihasa. In accordance, great Mahakavyas such as Kalidasa's Raghuvamsa, Kumaradasa's Janaki Harana, Bhati's Ravanavada or Bhattakavya and C, have drawn their themes from the Ramayana and Bharavi's Kiratarjuniya, Magas Sisapalavada and Sriharsa's Nisadhyakarita and C, from the Mahabharata. See also Hindu mythology Buddhist mythology Jain cosmology History of India Hindu epics Ramayana Mahabharata
Piranhas. <laughs>